Okay, take a minute, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. All right, so we're told that a payday loan company makes loans between $100 and $1,000 available to its customers. Every 14 days, customers are charged 30% interest with compounding. So that just means um, after 14 days, you get 30, charge 30%, and then uh, the next 14 days, if you don't pay it, you get 30, charge 30% on top of that. It says in 2013, Remy took out a $300 payday loan. Which expression can be used to calculate the amount she would owe in dollars after one year? So she is taking out a loan and not paying it off. She's just leave, she's taking out the $300 loan. And you notice that each choice starts at 300 because that's the amount that we're starting with. And in general, if you're looking at the interest here, it's called the amount based on time. Uh, so start with a principal balance or a principal loan. And then you're going to take that and multiply it by 1 plus, um, in this case, the rate you're being charged. And then you're looking at that over the time interval that you're being charged that rate. So in this case, we're charged how much? We're charged $300, essentially, is our, our loan. And they're going to give you that money, but you have to pay it back. And then over time, you have to pay it back with, what is it? Um, 30% interest every time. So if you if you take that loan out and don't pay it back, you're going to owe the full amount, 1, plus 30%. So 0.3. 1.3. And how often are you going to be charged this amount? It's a 14-day cycle. So um, I'm, trying to, you know, I'm thinking to myself that in general, it's the amount of time and days divided by 14. So in general, um, let me just fix that real quick. In general, uh, the amount you're going to owe is based on this formula right here. Now, before we look at the answer, uh, let's just make sure we agree that this is, in fact, correct. And what I usually do to, make, to convince myself is I plug in some values. I say, well, I know that after 14 days, there is supposed to be one payment compounded of 30%, right? Because every 14 days, here it is, every 14 days you charge 30%. So the first value I can plug in is when t is 14. And that would mean that you have 300 times what? Times 1.3 to the power of 14. I'm just plugging in 14 where there was t divided by 14. And what's 14 divided by 14? That's just 1. So we have 300 times 1.3 to the first. Now that makes sense to me. And the reason it makes sense to me is because that's going to be 300 times 1.3. So it's going to add 30% to 300, which is exactly what it should do. After plugging in 14 days, we should have exactly 30% more that we owe than before. And if I add 28 days in here, what would that mean? Well, I'm thinking, well, that's, I know 28 is 14 times 2. So I would do 300 times 1.3 to the power of 28 divided by 14. And that equals 300 times 1.3 squared. And I'm going to write it this way, 1.3 times 1.3. Right, 28 divided by 14 is 2, so it's 1.3 squared. And this fits the model because after the first 14 days, she would owe 300 times 1.3. And whatever that is, she would owe 1.3 of that amount. So you're multiplying that previous amount, 1.3, by another 1.3 here. So just to see that looks like on a calculator, let's pull it up. So that would mean um, you have 300 times 1.3. She would owe $390. And then multiply that by 1.3 again. It's compounding. So you'd owe 1.30% uh, more than you did before. And altogether, you owe $507. So this is giving the total amount you owe. If you do this for a whole year, it might not divide evenly, so it might be a portion of that amount. amount. And I said that the first amount you can enter is 14, but I guess you can enter one day or two days because they're going to add a little bit of interest each day. So over the course of a year, that means you would pick choice four, right? Because a year has 365 days, which is our usual assumption. We're ignoring leap years. And we're dividing that by 14. So essentially, we're finding A of 365. All right, I hope that helped.